I'm Barry from The Next Adventure Show, where we talk about adventure, travel, motor camping, motorcycles, and occasionally fine whiskey. Recently got back from a 7,000 kilometer or about 4,500 mile, three and a half week road trip. And some folks were asking me, what, what do you take on a trip like that? So this is my what's in my tank bag video for a 7,000 kilometer road trip. This is my tank bag. It's a Moscow Moto Nomax tanks bag, which is the successor to the popular Nomad tank bag. I did an unboxing video here and I'm going to do a full 7,000 kilometer review, which I will link to down below. But this is what's in my tank bag. So, um, the Moscow Moto does have this beaver flap at the top that's got the kind of molly webbing across it. And there is a map case that can go up on top of here. And I do have the map case, but I elected not to take it because we were going through very kind of remote outback rural Australia. And there's not a lot of roads, people. You can be on a road for 500 kilometers without a turn. So you don't really need a map so much. Um, I did take some maps with me, but I didn't have them on the tank bag. Uh, what I did have in the molly webbing there is this D-ring helmet lock, which came in pretty handy, actually. So um, it's basically a D-ring that has a combination lock on it. Uh, and you can put that through your helmet and then uh, lock it up. Uh, so I could leave the helmet dangling uh, locked up from my bark busters if I wanted to leave it unattended. But it also came in handy when I was filling the fuel bladder. So we had to take an extra fuel bladder with us because there were some stretches there up to 380 kilometer stretches uh, where there was no fuel. So uh, I used this to hang the fuel bag uh, from the handguards, from the bark buster handguards while I was filling it up, which made it much easier to fill up uh, at the petrol station. And then when I was screwing the nozzle on, I would hang it there and then take it off. So this actually came in quite handy. It's a pretty cool little piece of gear. Then on top of the bag, there is this beaver tail type arrangement that allows you easy access to stuff without actually opening the bag. Uh, and as you can see here, there are multiple pockets in the beaver tail as well. And it's got webbing in there, so stuff's not gonna fall out. So if you need to take your gloves off and you can just put them in there or something like that if you wanna get off the bike for a minute. Uh, but typically what I had in there is a little cloth to clean sunglasses and the visor. Had a spoon if I needed uh, one quickly for a little lunch break or something like that at the petrol station. Uh, and then a pen, because you always seem to need a pen at some point. And then this is just an Allen key that goes to my quad lock mount, which actually was very handy as well, in case I had to tighten it or loosen it or adjust it. It needs a, a special Allen key size that I didn't think I had in my other set. So I had it there if I needed to adjust the quad lock, which had the navigation phone on it as well. And then in the main pocket uh, of the beaver tail, I've got some handy wipes there to keep the hands clean. And then I've got um, a couple of packets of tissues. It was pretty cold out there. Uh, you might get a runny nose while you're driving because it, uh, you know, it got down to about one degree at, at, at night. So uh, tissues there if I needed it. And then there is a D-ring here too that you can hook stuff to if you don't want to lose it, like your, key, like your car keys, your house keys or something like that. Or uh, if some lanyard you want to put through that D-ring, which is pretty handy as well. So there's actually the main pocket, then there's a little sub pocket underneath. Um, and then there's a kind of an equipment pocket here as well. And in the equipment pocket, uh, I had a multi-tool, I think it's a Gerber, uh, which I did use a few times, which came in handy. Uh, I also, we're going to do a fair bit of camping, so I also brought just a dedicated knife uh, with me as well. I don't think I used that once, so I can probably ditch that. There's a blade in there, but I thought I might need a dedicated blade, but I didn't end up needing that. Uh, so that was a bit superfluous to the trip. Uh, and that's the easy access kind of beaver tail area. Uh, and then there's kind of two interior pockets as well. So. So the design philosophy for the No Max tank bag is there's a lots of little containers and multiple layers through the bag so that you can organize everything. So it's really kind of those anal retentive people who want to know exactly where stuff is 
as opposed to like the big cavernous space of some of the other tank bags. I'm not convinced about that part of this bag because you do give up some space with all those layers. So there's extra canvas and extra layers and zippers and things uh, which take away from the storage capacity. And if you wanted to get something larger in here like a camera, like an SLR or a mirrorless camera or something like that, there's not a lot of room for that. So I'm not sure if I like the multiple layers or not. I would like to try one that's very similar, but with just one, with, with the beaver tail and then just one large container or maybe segmented inside. Anyway, uh, open it up, the, the top layer. Inside the top layer, had some chewing gum. Uh, I had a fly net because in rural Australia, the flies are awful. They'll just land on your face and they'll crawl in your eyes and they'll crawl in your ears. So this is just a mosquito net slash fly net that you can put over your hat to keep the flies away. I did use that a couple times. Um, then I had a DJI Osmo Pocket, kind of a run and gun camera to get some B-roll of the trip. Uh, it fits nicely in there and it's easy to use once you pull it out. It's gimbal stabilized if you've never seen one. Just turn it on, the little gimbal does its thing and then you can uh, gimbal track things if you like. It's pretty easy to use, pretty quick to use. So it's, it's good for a little run and gun, pull it out, uh, get some B-roll footage and that sort of thing. You can even do kind of piece to camera stuff to it. Nice form factor to it as well. So that's in there. Um, then I had this little D-ring towel. Um, in case you need to wash your hands, it's a little, little chamois towel. Dry yourself, dry your face, wipe your hands, whatever. Don't think I actually use that at all. Um, then you can see there's multiple pockets in here as well. So there's some three little pockets here, then there's a bigger pocket there, and then two pockets on the flap side, and another pocket here for your sunglasses, which mine don't quite fit in. Um, but in this lower pocket here, uh, I just had some Band-Aids in case I cut my finger or some little, just needed a quick Band-Aid. I didn't want to break out the first aid kit. Uh, some alcohol wipes to keep the, uh, clean the wound out before putting the Band-Aid on and some headache tablets as well. And then in these two pockets, um, I had a headlamp. So when I get to a campsite, I can just whip the headlamp out, it's right there. Or if I have to do something on the bike, back underneath the bike, I can just put the headlamp on uh, and I'm good to go. Then I had some AirPods. So if I need to make phone calls or want to listen to music in the campsite or whatever, or need to make a phone call on the road, it's probably easier to do it with the AirPods than try and hear someone over the phone near the road. And then I had this, which is a Bluetooth tire sensor. So I got uh, tire pressure sensors on my tire, and then this gives you a digital readout. Just got some snacks, muesli bar, an iPhone charging cable if I needed to charge the iPhone off the bike, uh, and then some spare batteries. So I've got some things that do require AAA batteries, so I'm just carrying some spare AAAs down there as well. And then that takes us to the main compartment, which is a bit bigger. Uh, and it's got, again, a pocket on the top and a pocket on the bottom. Uh, so in there I had a hat. Sun in Australia is quite harsh, so anytime you stop and take the helmet off, probably a good idea to put the hat on. Uh, some snacks. Sunglasses. Um, again, more snacks. Uh, then I had this little pouch that had spare kind of cables, a Bluetooth remote for the phone if I wanted to take pictures, uh, and some spare batteries for the GoPro cameras and stuff that we were using. Just if I needed a quick battery change, I had it right there in the tank bag. Um, then I had some sunscreen and some bug spray. Mosquitoes get pretty bad out there at some of the campsites. Um, a little bit of Velcro in case I had to Velcro some stuff, especially the speakers in my helmet, uh, adjusting those and making sure they were in the right spot. Um, then I had a notebook, uh, a notebook and a pen, so I can just take notes on the trip and I can remember later uh, different parts of the trip, what we did, where we were, that kind of thing. Or uh, if I just want to take any notes on anything, I had a little bit of a pack there. Uh, then I learned this trick from one of the other YouTubers. Uh, I got another pen 
but then I'd wrap duct tape around the pen. So if I need some duct tape, I don't have a whole big bulky roll with me, but if I need a little piece, I can just unroll it, tear it off of here, and away you go. Pretty cool idea. I'm not sure who did that. Maybe Tim from FTA Adventures. Um, and then I had this little gadget, which was pretty cool. So it is like a hand mount for the camera. So you can see there's a screw on top. So I can screw the camera on top of there. Uh, and if we're interviewing someone or talking to someone or uh, I want to put a camera in someone's face or have a bit of more steady control over the camera, I can do that as well. So it's a power cell as well. So I can use it as a camera mount or I can, I can use it as a power cell or I can use it as both. So if I'm filming, I can actually plug the camera into this USB power cell and charge the camera while I'm filming, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then in this thing, uh, I just got some miscellaneous stuff in here. I use a quad lock mount for the navigation phone. So I have a navigation phone on my windscreen mount uh, that's got the maps and GPS that we're following as well. Uh, and if it starts to rain, it has a little rain sleeve that you can put over the top of it. So it's just an old Android phone that I bought secondhand, loaded some offline maps and music and stuff. Uh, if it starts to rain, I can put that over the top of it to keep the phone dry. Uh, and then in here is just some miscellaneous stuff, uh, stickers for the trip. So whenever we stopped somewhere, I wanted to make sure that Red Center Road Trip stickers were adorning whatever pub we happened to stop at. And um, this, actually, I went through some Aboriginal land uh, on the way to Kings Canyon and I needed a permit for that. So that was sitting in there as well. So that's what's inside the tank bag. But there are also two tank bag features that I really liked and I used quite a lot. So in this pocket here is a bladder. It's a two liter water bladder, a uh, hydration bladder. So uh, you can fill that with two liters of water and then you can see there's the hydration hose there um, and it fits up under your full face helmet as well. Uh, and you can have a drink whenever you want. And it's good that you're not carrying that weight on your back. Uh, it's right on the tank uh, the whole time, which is pretty convenient. Well, so that, that probably got used the most. That feature got used the most on the trip for sure. Uh, and it's what I really, really like about the bag as well, is that it comes with hydration built into it. The other cool feature about the bag that came in handy is, once it's off the bike, you can pull these straps out and then hook them to these D-rings on the bottom. Um, and then it becomes a backpack. Um, so I use that hiking in several national parks uh, that we were in. And the other good thing about it as well is if you're doing a lot of standing up, a lot of dirt and sand work and stuff like that, um, with this sitting on top of the tank, uh, it's kind of hard to get forward up over the tank where you need to be. So if there's going to be a lot of technical work and a lot of standing, I can take this off the tank, put it on my back, and then I can get my weight more forward on the bike as well. So two really cool features, the hydration bladder and the fact that it turns into a reasonable backpack, quite a reasonable backpack as well. Um, and then there's two little tiny compartments left. Uh, there's one just here, and, but it's really designed to hold the rain cover. So it has a separate rain cover that you can put over the top of it, keep the moisture off because it's not waterproof. Uh, and then there's a little tiny little compartment left over from the design of the Nomad down here where the hydration bladder used to come out of the bottom. But now it's just a tiny little pocket down here that I just had a phone charging cable, some house keys, uh, and some lip balm in there. Uh, and that's it. So that is what is in my tank bag for a 7,000 kilometer trip. If you have any good tips on what you take in your tank bag or what kind of tank bag you have that you really like, please leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next adventure.